Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about how you can charge up your superconducting magnet if you happen to have access to one. Here's my sketch of mine. There's your superconducting coil at 70 Henry's. That's the unit of inductance. And my sketch is not necessarily accurate in the actual construction of it. I show a separate piece outside of it but it most likely is just part of the coil it does have a heater next to it it's a very lightweight light duty heater as we may know it at room temperature it connects to a voltage on the order of a 9 volt battery and draws a similarly small current of maybe 75 to 100 milliamps it's enough to heat that section of the superconducting coil so that it becomes no longer superconducting. That's the trick in getting energy into this coil. If it was still zero ohms at superconducting, if you were to try to connect an outside current, um, it would zip through that zero ohm section, but it wouldn't really go on to charge up this coil coils and generally you have to apply a voltage over a period of time and their current slowly grows. It's a property of inductors. So we heat that up. This then becomes, according to the spec sheet on this Jastec 7 Tesla magnet I'm dealing with, 7 ohms. There we go, 7 ohms. All right. Now let's go on and look what's going on here. What am I trying to show here? Well, you're inserting a probe so you can get some contacts to apply that voltage to your heater. And then you're also inserting a second probe from the outside world. In this case, the Jastec uses two probes to also make contact with a uh, external power supply. Mine happens to be a 5 volt 150 amp power supply. I don't necessarily use all those amps. And um, my primitive way of controlling the current flow is to make a homemade high power resistor. I use two sections of copper, household copper half inch pipe. It's about maybe a foot and a half long, and maybe it's about 10 inches, 12, 10 to 12 inches apart. And I use some fine nichrome wire. If I wrap it once, it uh, permits approximately a half an amp to flow. Wrap it again for a full wrap, maybe one amp to flow. And keep on wrapping to get more and more amps to, to flow through these wires. I purchased a inexpensive current sensor uh, that can measure from 0 to 100 amps. It's a uh, a strip of thick metal and it's got some um, basically a voltmeter to measure a voltage drop and turn and convert it into amps and it's rated at 75 millivolts if I do have 100 amps flowing through it which which is the specs on the sensor and I've got a diode here this is left over from when you're discharging it provides a pathway so for example if I'm pulling on the electrons it's this will be like a heavy train slow train getting moving and moving and moving and if for some reason that my power supply was interrupted those elect though that flow of current will still be trying to happen and this just provides a pathway for that to dissipate itself in case my power supply disconnected now most likely inside the superconductor they, they also have these protective diodes in case uh, someone were to turn on the uh, heater and nothing yet was was connected to the outside here you got some diodes to permit the current to flow you know 89 amps can flow through a diode and uh, generate maybe one volt voltage drop per diode for maybe a total of two two volts drop, um, which is a whole lot better than trying to throw 80 amperes of, or 80 actually 89 amperes of current through a seven ohm resistor, which I talked about in the introduction part one. 
Okay, so this is a simply allows me to provide um, a voltage to suck electrons out into the plus and push them out the minus and some of it will go through the 7 ohm resistor for example if I um, wrap this at a half an amp it's about 10 ohms that's about 7 ohms so 7 out of a total of 17 would make for 7 out of 17 ohms times a total of 5 volts in the circuit. I think that gives me somewhere around 2 volts um, across here and here and when you apply 2 volts to a 7, 70 Henry coil you can get it to you can get maybe 1.5 amps per minute increase so after the first minute you might get one or one and a half amps flowing after the second minute it would be two or three amps flowing and it keeps growing now as those amps keep growing you'll then have to start winding another section of nichrome wire around this so that you'll get more and more amps to pass through this resistor and into the circuit and so the technique for this do-it-yourself inexpensive circuit is to watch the voltage from the inside across this coil and indeed this particular magnet also has uh, sensor wires for this second probe so they also go out to the outside world so you can measure the actual voltage right on that superconducting coil points right, right there where that not where that piece had become non superconductive so two volts across here we lose some of the current through that 7 ohm resistor and some of the current is available to continue to go through the 70 Henry coil um, well uh, that's the theory behind this simple system you you watch the voltage here you kind of keep it below one and a half volts or so when it starts to drop it means the current um, has been started to flow through the, through the coil and if you want more current to get pushed through then you'll put another wrapper on here you just keep wrapping and wrapping here and the, you know theoretically you may be able to get pretty accurately close to 89 amps um, it might take take some doing you might have to add a single you know um, rotary turn um, power resistor to help tune in that final um, amount of current well there you go some attempt at uh, explaining a homemade uh, superconducting magnet charge-up circuit Thank you for listening.